Hey everybody, John here, Old Hickory Forge. Welcome back. So uh, between my day job and custom orders, I haven't had a whole lot of time to make videos lately, so I apologize for that. There will be a thousand subscriber giveaway coming up pretty soon because the channel's over a thousand subscribers now, which is pretty awesome. But there will be a giveaway coming up soon, so stick around for that. But uh, the subject of this video, it's mostly for my buddy Eric because I just finished a new forge and he plans on replicating the design. And it's easier for me to just do a video explaining what it is and how it works than it is to do it to him individually. So if you're interested in building the ribbon burner forge, check it out. If you have no interest at all in building the ribbon burner forge, cut the video off now, I won't be offended. But uh, basically, I've had my three burner atmospheric forge for a while now, long time now, and it works great. But a good 99% of my work was done under those front two burners, and even then about 70% of that was done under that front burner, so that's a lot of dead space in the forge you're wasting fuel to heat up that you don't need to use. And you know, if you're if you work just forge on the weekends, you're strictly a hobbyist, that there's no problem with that. Venturi burners are gonna work great for you. But if you're someone like me who does take custom orders and uh, who does do a good bit of forging, you know, at a certain point the cost of gas starts eating into what you need to keep your workshop running. So anyway, I went ahead and uh, I built a ribbon burner forge. Ribbon burners, they're a lot more fuel efficient than Venturi burners because they run off of forced air. And, uh, you know, they don't require as much gas being forced into that small orifice at a time. So you get more heat with less fuel. The only downside is you have to have an electric blower to run it. Which really isn't that big a deal because the cost of electricity is a lot cheaper than gas. And the amount I'll be spending on the electricity to run the fan will be very easily offset by what I'm going to be saving on gas. But, uh... Anyway, let's go take a look at the forge and I'll uh, show you how it works. So here's a quick look at what a ribbon burner is. It's basically a block of solid castable refractory with a bunch of holes in it, which is attached to a manifold that has a baffle inside there to evenly distribute the air gas mixture. Runs to these uh, series of two inch pipes. Orifice assembly connects right here and you got a blower right here forcing air through the whole thing. So quick close up of the orifice assembly for Eric so he knows what parts to buy. You got a quarter inch needle valve. This is what functions as your gas orifice so you don't have to mess around with a MIG tip or nothing. It's just piped into a quarter inch street elbow that's welded to this. If you're not confident in your welding abilities, you can just drill and tap a hole and put a coupling in there and just make sure your fitting's airtight and you'll be good to go. Quarter inch to quarter inch male to male hex nipple. Quarter inch ball valve. Quarter inch to three eighths flare fitting. The ball valve is technically unnecessary, but it's a really nice safety feature to have so if anything goes wrong, you can cut the gas flow right there. And like I said, the whole assembly is built out of two inch pipe. If you're really confident in your welding abilities, you can actually build this whole assembly out of either two inch square tubing or two inch schedule 40 pipe if you can make airtight welds all around the whole thing. But uh, let me sit you on the tripod and I'll show you how it works. So first thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure your needle valve is closed all the way and your gas is off. That way there's no worry about pressure building up in the system at all. Go ahead and cut your blower on. Open up your air gate a little bit so you can feel feel the air moving through there. You want it coming out kind of vigorously. Then you can go ahead and cut your gas on. And once you got your ignition source ready, just go ahead and open up that needle valve just slightly. Then you kind of have to play with the fuel air mix a little bit to get the burner running how it should. You want the cones to be up against the orifices of the burner. You don't you don't want them out in the forge because then you just lose a lot of heat. So you might have to give it a little bit less air, a little bit more gas. There we go. And that's about the kind of flame you're looking for. You see how it's back up against the burner. You got a nice even blue flame. It's not too rich, not too lean. So here's the forge running at about 2 PSI for about the last three minutes or so. As you can see, it's heating up real nice. We got a good even mix going. As the forge gets hotter and uh, the propane combusts a little bit sooner, you can go ahead and add in more gas and more air to get more heat. But realistically, you know, that's doing pretty good at 2 PSI. This thing should weld at around 5 PSI, which is gonna save me a lot of gas versus my Venturi forge that I had to crank up to about 15 to 20 PSI to weld. Anyway, so the air gate right here is running about halfway open. Blower is running about halfway open. But uh, I'd say that's working pretty good. So when it comes time to cut the forge off, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is cut the gas in the tank. You're gonna wanna close your needle valve all the way while leaving the blower still running. 
that'll force any gas that's still in the pipes out. And then you can go ahead and cut the blower off. And uh, that's pretty much it. So that's just a quick look at the new forge and how it runs and whatnot. It's the forge I'm going to be using for all my forging from now on. The video, like I said, is mostly for my buddy Eric because he plans on building himself one. Now, uh, that being said, ribbon burner forges are not cheap to build. They are the most expensive type of forge to build, but they're the least expensive to run. So for me, it's worth it. Like I said at the beginning of the video, if you're a hobbyist, you forge on the weekends. For you, the investment might not be worth it. But my motto for this whole build was basically buy once, cry once. So I spared pretty much no expense. The inspiration for the forge was a video by a fellow by the name of Essential Craftsman. That's not his actual name, obviously, but that's his channel name. But he did a really good in-depth video of what ribbon burners are and why they're superior for a working blacksmith shop than, uh, than Venturi burners or just conventional forced air burners. But you saw forge works really good. I think it's going to be really useful. There's no dead space in it like there was with the other forge, so that's nice. And uh, should make forge welding a lot easier. But anyway, like, share, subscribe, all that jazz. Like I said, there will be a 1,000 subscriber giveaway coming up, so stick around for that. And uh, thanks again.